So, I've finished the TypeScript Groceries API project, and I'm pretty happy with the project itself, but um, I noticed that I didn't really go over the things that makes TypeScript distinct from JavaScript. So I wanted to actually create one of these um, beginner-friendly videos of getting into the language, even though I don't typically like these types of videos, but yeah, here, here we go. I just want to get um, types and classes out of the way, so then we can start using TypeScript without any confusion. So right here is the, the TypeScript groceries project I'm using um, just because I don't want to reconfigure the, the compiler. Uh, speaking of which, if we just do a TSC to compile all, all of our TypeScript into JavaScript, you can see what is generated. So there's the sync awaits. So, um, this is what a class looks like in common JS, if you will. So yeah, let's let's get rid of that because it's kind of scary. So clear. All oh, right, we also need to install our dependencies. So let's do that. Okay, so let's just make a example.ts file. And we're going to do this. So the first thing in TypeScript that's different from JavaScript are types. So you have the normal, uh, let's call this a thing. I don't like that word actually. Um, number, num equals to nine. So uh, with TypeScript, there's a thing called type inference. So this number is going to be a number. It's inferring it um, because we're not adding a type. And TypeScript is optionally typed, so you could just do any. And this num this variable could be anything. So you could just do a, this actually should be a let, so I could demonstrate. So num equals string, there's no problem. Oops. It's, <clears throat> there's no problem. But if you change this to number, there is a problem because num, the variable num is expected to be a number and we're providing it a string. So if you instead change this to a string, this one gets uh, mad because this is an, uh, a string. What you can do is to give it a union type. So that, <clears throat> so the variable number or num could be either a string or a number which is this pipe here is it's a it's basically or now it's different from the logical or because it's one pipe instead of two basically and then a thing about TypeScript is that it's built on top of JavaScript so you have access to the native primitive types with a capital letter but it doesn't um what's the word uh it doesn't cast very well to to other string types so if you do let's, let's do this um so if if you use the uppercase string um, <clears throat> for all the JavaScript native primitive types, uh, it won't be able to cast this variable to a DOM element. So in case you use uh, TypeScript for the front end, so something like React or Angular, uh, doing this will actually throw an error. So it's best to use the, the lowercase for all the primitive types. And the primitive types is going to be string. Um, let's actually make this a comment of number and boolean 
think that's it. Um, JavaScript doesn't have a lot of types, so yeah. <clears throat> For the not so primitive types, so object and arrays, then you're you're fine using the uppercase ones. Now that brings us to the next thing. Um, how do you define an, an object? <clears throat> well, you could do this. Um, uh, it's gonna be that empty object, and then let's say num wants to have. Uh, let's do that, that coordinates actually. Um, y num for number. So now num is mad. The variable number is mad because an empty object doesn't have the the x and y coordinates that we're presenting to it. So yeah. So it's be nine y is four. Now you'll see that there's semicolons here, and that is because what this is is called an interface. So let's just call it chord. So um, interface chord do x the number and y the number and everything is happy um, so what an interface is is basically it's like a class in that it sh tells you what the object is supposed to look like but unlike a class it doesn't have <clears throat> um, methods, it's just properties. And then you could also add a Z coordinate, which will throw an error here, <clears throat> but you can make it optional by having the question mark. So now X and Y is provided, and it's still a coordinate, but <clears throat> you also have the option of adding a Z coordinate. So, uh, okay, um, I'm going to put this on multiple spaces to make it easier to read. Okay, um, that's an interface, which is basically a type. Um, let's see, there's one more type that I want to go over. So, interface looks like this. I'm going to get rid of it now. There's also an enum uh, right, I have to give it a name. Um status codes. So <clears throat> the reason why you want an enum is because uh, stuff like status codes, you would normally provide um, the provide all of the status codes in the the what's it called? its own object and reference it later. But doing it this way um, makes it a little easier. So everyone knows the not found is 404. Is it comma? Yeah. And then oh, there's OK, which is 200. There's created, which is uh, 201. And you can reference it uh, just like a normal object. So we're going to do stat. Oops, not. Yeah, there's a, <clears throat> there's a built-in HTTP status code. Um, let's uh, not use that for the purposes of this video. Stat status codes dot OK. And then if we run this, it's going to console log 200. Uh, so ts node. And this file is, is source example.ts and 200. And we change this to <coughs> created. Save. Press up. And it gives us 201. And of course, 
not found. And the reason you use enums is um, off the top of your head, you're not going to remember the status code numbers. So you're given an alias that that is much easier to remember while you're coding. So you just do status codes dot not found. There's other uses for these. Um, I can't really think of a use case at the moment. So I'm not going to do it. But that is basically um, TypeScript types. So <clears throat> if you don't provide a type, it's inferred. So uh, uh, why is it still caps lock? All right, let uh, dude equals dude. It's going to be inferred as the type string. And but if you give it a type, it's going to be it could only be this type. So dude cannot equal to one. The an error will be thrown and a VS Code will lint it for you because it VS Code is built for TypeScript. But if you're not using Visual Studio Code um, and something like Atom or Sublime Text, uh, the whoops, where is it? The uh, the compiler will also throw an error, so this should blow up. Yep, there it is. So TypeScript error is like unable to compile. Type one is not assignable to string. So yeah. So this allows your code to be a lot safer and then it's easier to scale with other people joining in because there are a lot of times when um, when you're working with JavaScript especially if um, variable names are very descriptive so something like x y three or three um, and you just see this variable floating around and you have no idea what this is um, Let's make this a boolean. And then later on, it, when you see it, you just hover over it, and you'll you'll know that it's boolean. And then in other editors, you could just do an option click to select and find the source code where it's referencing it, and you'll know that it's a, it's a specific type of what it wants to be. Um, which is really important because in JavaScript, you can just test the truthiness of something. So, I don't know, if empty object, well, basically, um, so you could test if a, an object is true or false based on what's in it and stuff. So things like this are helpful later on. Okay, and to see the referencing source code types, let's go into one of these other things. So let's say that, um, what is app? It is an instance of Express. Or what does the app.use do? Well, it takes a request handler or an array of request handlers, and it does stuff to it with four overloads. Okay. Um, I think that's it. Oh, one last thing. Um, so let's go with R for an array. So um, it's a so the type of arrays Let's actually get rid of this. Um, you could give it the array brackets like this, and you could set the type as uh, <clears throat> the array is going to be a, an array of numbers, or it could be an array of string. And this is generally how you would define an array type. Um, let's see what else is there. Uh, there's also uh, this syntax, which you won't see as much. 
and this is saying the type or the variable r is of type array where the insides are strings and yeah and that's the basics of TypeScript types okay let's get rid of everything all right i'll see you guys next time